Today I'm going to be showing you how to find naturalization records for your um, New York-based ancestor using only their name, and it is um, completely free. So um, first I'm going to start off on Ancestry, but uh, there is a free way to do this that I'll show you in a second. Um, so if you don't have an Ancestry account and don't want to get one and pay for one, just uh, skip ahead to the next part of the video. But if you do have an Ancestry account, this is a great place to start because you will get to see a historical document of your ancestor, which I always think is pretty cool and pretty preferable to just seeing a name in the database. So I'm going to search for our ancestor today. Um, her name is Conchetta Soprano, and I'm just gonna search by name. We lucked out, there's only one result. So if I hover over view record, I see here a little preview of a small image. I'm going to click on it. And now we have the naturalization index of our uh, original Italian ancestor. Um, it looks like she was naturalized on September 2nd, 1948 in Brooklyn, New York. And she you can see her signature there. Um, and so I'm going to show you uh, a few things to look for on this index card. Uh, that will be helpful in your ancestry search um, if you're you know doing this because you want to apply for italian citizenship uh, that sort of thing so at the top here uh, circled in blue this is the c file number of your ancestor maybe this is potentially your ancestor's c file number um, in my experience every time i've seen a number at the top of an index card it has been the c file number but people, um, genealogists and people in these uh, dual U.S. Italian citizenship groups do not advise relying on this number at the top of an index card as the C file number. Um, so I'm going to show you a more accurate place to find a C file number later on in the video, and you can use a C file number to um, order documents from USCIS, uh, completely bypassing their uh, index search uh, which has a very long wait time. So uh, this is a pretty valuable number to have, and this should be the correct C file number, but I will show you uh, later on in the video a better place to look for it. The next number on this document is the petition number. Um, this is gonna be our most important number for today, but I'll talk about it in a second. Uh, and the final number highlighted here in yellow is the alien registration number. Your ancestor will not have an alien registration number if they, um, died before 1940 um, because that's when the alien uh, registration requirements began in the United States. But this is another number that you can use to order USCIS documents uh, and being able to bypass that, that index search and that very long wait time. But like I said, today we're focusing on the petition number. That's the most important number today. So where else can I look for a petition number? What if I don't have an Ancestry account? I didn't find an index card in that search, or the index card I did find was completely unreadable. I mean, with this one, I don't know that that number could be anything but four, but it is possible that that's a completely different number. It's nice to be able to cross-reference with something. So uh, in this case, we're going to uh, do a search on the Italian Genealogical Group website. So go to italiangen.org and click on this databases tab. Then we're going to select a database and we're going to scroll down and select naturalizations. And now we have access to a database of naturalizations uh, that took place in New York as well as uh, New Jersey. So um, I'm going to once again type in my ancestor's name. And you can also uh, choose to restrict it by year, but I'm not going to do that today. Uh, and you should be able to filter by location, um, but this is not working for me as of late, so I, I don't recommend doing this. I did email them, so I'll leave a comment if um, they email me back and, and this ends up being fixed, but don't, don't filter by location for right now. So I hit the search button and we got our results back. Um, so now we have uh, two records that were found on Conchetta Soprano. Um, it looks like she filed a declaration of intent as well as a petition. So the Declaration of Intent, um, we aren't going to search for that specifically today, but we may luck out and find it, who knows. 
that's going to be the file that has potentially has a photograph of your ancestor if it was filed after 1929 and if you find one of the original copies of it that had a photograph on it. Um, this is also important to keep in mind that the declaration of intent was your ancestor saying that they intended to naturalize. It is not their naturalization date. So you can see here, um, she filed hers in 1944. That is not the year that she naturalized. Um, that's not the year that if she had minor children, for instance, they would have lost their Italian citizenship. That's just the year that she filed her declaration of intent. She would have had seven years after 1944 to then file her petition and finish naturalizing, which it looks like she met that due date because she uh, finished naturalizing in 1948, as we see now and also saw on the card earlier. Our ancestor's petition number, we can go ahead and uh, look for the database that we'll use to find our ancestor's naturalization records. So I'm going to look up N-A-R-A, NARA, NYC, naturalization records. Um, you can, if you're not in, if your ancestor was not in New York City, you can look up your own uh, locale to try and find those. Uh, and I clicked on the first link here from archives.gov. Um, this is a listing of all of the naturalization records that are held at the National Archives at New York City. Um, so we are looking for records in the Eastern District of New York. Remember, we were in Brooklyn. Um, and the type of record that we're looking for today is going to be the petition for naturalization. Now you'll see that their dates available go until 1991. It's a pretty big and robust database, but the only records online go to 1958. That's fine for our purposes today because our ancestor did naturalize in 1948. Um, so that's going to be all good. But if your natu ancestor naturalized uh, after 1958, you will have to contact uh, the National Archives for a search for those records um, to be able to order them. They're very friendly and very responsive there. Um, but hopefully your ancestor naturalized early and you'll be able to find them today. So I clicked on this link which took me to this family search catalog, um, the final petition and citizenship papers in New York uh, for 1865 to 1958. Uh, and you'll see here in red that this uh, catalog has been indexed. Uh, if you click this link, you can do a search for your ancestor uh, and hopefully their record will pop right up. Oh, look at that. Ours didn't. What does that mean? Does that mean that our record isn't actually in this database? That we should give up? That we should go, go to sleep for the night, you know, email NARA tomorrow and just let them do all the hard searching? Well, no, because we have this petition number uh, as well as the date and our ancestor's name, uh, we can use all of that information to search this catalog directly. So, um, here is a breakdown of how you can use this index card or uh, these database results to search this uh, catalog directly. Um, first, uh, we used the court uh, location to identify that collection. We already did that when we clicked this link from the NARA website. Now uh, we are going to use the year to quickly find the family search uh, page that our record is located on. As you can see, there are 16 pages of this record. It's a pretty hefty record, and they begin all the way in 1865. So I'm going to flip forward until I start to get close to uh, 1948, which is when our ancestor naturalized. So right now I'm in the 30s, I'm in the 40s, and I'm in the 50s. So I went a little too far. Uh, so back here, we're on page 14, and I'm going to scroll down until I start to see 19... 48s. Here we go. Um, we do know that our ancestor naturalized on September 2nd, 1948, but um, our ancestor's paperwork would have actually been filed a few months earlier. So now that we've found the general page that our uh, catalog volume is on, we are going to use this petition number to find the exact volume our ancestor's record is in and be able to look up that record ourselves. So um, our record is 460814. So I'm going to go to the four sixes. Here we go. We're at 460801 through 461150. Perfect. So 
Our ancestors record is located somewhere in here. Um, this contains uh, 28th of July through the 24th of August. So like I said, this is not September. It would have been filed a few months before September. So it's a good thing that we checked that petition number and that we're searching by that. Um, so I'm gonna go and click on this little camera icon and that takes us to the microfilm viewer. Don't you feel like a real, uh, you know, research person? You feel like uh, the character from Silence of the Lambs when she's looking at the microfilm it makes everyone feel really uh, investigative when you get to scroll through these entries. Um, but I see there's about 1,200 uh, instances of microfilm here. So I'm going to go to image 600 and double click it because now we're about halfway through the collection and we can see 460972. I went too far. Uh, we're looking for 460814, um, but that's okay. We now have an impression of where we are because um, these, these aren't linear. Um, these little packets contain multiple pages each. Um, so it's not like you could just go to, you know, entry 814 and expect to see your ancestors there. You do have to kind of search by hand. So I'm going to go to page 300, see where we are here. Okay, we're at 460886, so still a little too far. Let's go to 150. And there's nothing, there's no number in the corner because this is an Oath of Allegiance page. So I'm going to skip to the next page and check it out. Oh, look at that. There's a bunch of confusing stuff on this page. That can happen sometimes. Uh, there will be uh, declaration numbers, there'll be dates, there'll be written things. Um, but I can see that we are now at petition 460845, um, looking here. Uh, if you ever get lost, just try flipping until you see a much more basic document like this one, and that'll help you get back home where you need to be. I'm gonna go to page 75 now. We're still a little too far, so let's try page 60. And it looks like we're at 460818, so still a little too far. Let's go to page 50. 460815, perfect. We're looking for 814, so I'm going to go back. And I can already tell you that this is the document that we're looking for, but it is the very last page of documents. So I'm going to flip back a few pages until I see another affidavit of witnesses and oath of allegiance. This is an oath for someone named Falda Hilda Halloway. Um, so that's not our ancestor, so I know that our ancestors' documents start on page 47. Keep in mind there may be, you know, a huge packet of documents uh, for your ancestor, maybe a couple pages, so always check the pages before and after uh, to make sure that you get all of the ones for your ancestor. Now we're on Conchetta Mary Soprano's uh, Declaration of Intention. Hey, that's the declaration I said we weren't gonna look for today uh, because we lucked out. Um, her declaration of intention was for some reason filed with her petition to naturalize. You can see we have this number three, four, something, five, two, and it lines up with this number here, three, four, zero, nine, five, two. Um, so this is her declaration of intention. This will have a lot of information on her and it will also, or it should also, because it was filed after 1929, have a picture. So I'm going to scroll down, and it does! We lucked out, we got a picture of our ancestor. Um, this isn't actually my ancestor, so I can't really look for a resemblance, uh, but um, now you have a picture to use. You can print it out as a keepsake. You can use it on Ancestry. These are, I find these pretty neat um, anytime I can find them, uh, and they're really uh, nice. So. The Declaration of Intention uh, may have a picture of your ancestor. Um, the other document that might have a picture would be their naturalization certificate, um, but that would be located at USCIS, uh, which, like I mentioned earlier, has very long wait times and uh, doesn't have a very good photocopy machine. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to find their Declaration of Intention somewhere if that's something you really want to see. But now I'm going to flip to the next page, and this is the petition for naturalization. So this is the paperwork that they would have filed when they actually intended to become a citizen, you know, anywhere from one to seven years after filing their declaration of intention. Um, it has a lot of 
interesting information on it. This is also a great document to cross-reference and make sure that you are looking at the right ancestor because it will usually have uh, all of their children's names, their maiden name, uh, her arrival in New York, her birth date, uh, her birthplace, sometimes down to the exact city uh, or uh, comune. So these are all um, good things if you're trying to kind of unlock those pieces of your family history. Now on the next page, and the last page of this packet, uh, is the Affidavit of Witnesses and the Oath of Allegiance. This uh, Oath of Allegiance is very important because this will have a date on it. In this case, it is, I believe, the 2nd of September, 19, uh, eight, yeah, 1948, which matches what we saw on this card originally. And uh, that will be the date that your ancestor is considered naturalized. That's the date that they renounced uh, any allegiance to any foreign state. So that's the day that they lost Italian citizenship and the day that maybe um, their, their children, any minor children, um, if it's a man and he had a spouse, uh, potentially she lost her citizenship um, to Italy. So that's a very important date uh, to, to keep in mind and to be able to find and confirm. Of course, that is assuming uh, that you also have a nice admitted stamp and that your ancestor wasn't denied, you know, United States citizenship, in which case they may have kept their Italian citizenship if they were found to have left the country for too long of a time period or committed some illegal act. Uh, it's entirely possible that they could have been denied. But in this case, uh, she wasn't. So she became an American citizen on this date. And also in the Oath of Allegiance is this certificate number. You can see it is labeled certificate number. Um, and this is the number, the C file number, that you can use to order documents from the USCIS genealog genealogy program uh, without a search case ID, without having to do an index search. So from this uh, USCIS page, uh, you can, uh, if you have this number, you can uh, now, uh, you know, fill out this form and uh, request a copy of this document from USCIS. And like I said, this number does match the uh, number on her index card, like I said it would. But, but, uh, since everyone advises not to use the index cards, uh, I've just shown you how to find the Oath of Allegiance so you can find the more secure uh, uh, C file number. But, uh, speaking of ordering things from USCIS, USCIS has pretty long wait times. They don't give very good copies. Um, they're overall not very fun to work with. They're kind of expensive. Um, and I have fantastic news for you. If your document was found in this collection, it was found in a National Archives collection. That means that you can order this document directly from the National Archives. Um, so you can go to archives.gov slash research slash order, um, and you can fill out their uh, order online or an order form and mail it in um, to order a certified document from NARA uh, of your ancestors declaration of intention of their petition um, you can use the uh, record number here so that you don't have to do a search and NARA is pretty responsive uh, they're pretty good at giving out documents and um, many if you are trying to get these for dual citizenship purposes. Many consulates um, are fine with using the Oath of Allegiance as a proof of naturalization in place of uh, a copy of the naturalization certificate. So this could be all you end up needing. You may be able to bypass USCIS altogether um, if you are trying to get certified documents for the purpose of presenting them to a consulate. Um, so I hope that this helps. I hope that this video is full of good news for you and that you are able to track down your ancestors records easily and quickly. Um, I will be doing more videos about how to use these family search databases and how to find these records uh, as I uncover more myself. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.